Damn, what a game to watch late. Uh, I had a driving lesson, so I stayed off social media, and I'm so happy I did because the drama in that game was absolutely unbelievable. Um, you know, first thing I will say is, you know, fair play to Brighton. They played absolutely out their skin. They hit the woodwork. Pfft, well, more times than we've made signings this season, I can tell you that for nothing. But, uh, yeah, they, they only uh, scored two in the end, thankfully. Um, but, yeah, I mean, credit to them. They played well. They deserved to at least take a point from this game. Of course they did. But that's not football sometimes. And one thing I will say... Banta Manchester United all you want about penalties, Manchester United, blah, 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 blah. But every single major decision in this game was correct. Thank fuck a video referee has been brought in um, and the referees can look at the actual decision numerous times on the touchline and make a final decision because every decision was correct. The initial decisions sometimes weren't, but the overruling ones were. So, you know, there was two disallowed goals for offside for us. Uh, first from Greenwood, then from Rashford. You know, fair play, they were correct. Uh, the Brighton penalty, Bruno made a poor tackle. That was a penalty. Fair enough, it's given. The second penalty that was given to Brighton was absolutely ridiculous. Clearly not a penalty at all. If anything, Connolly fouled Pogba by, you know, kicking his knee or whatever. It just, you know, at, at worst, it's a coming together, but it's never a penalty. So that was overturned correctly. And then the penalty, however ridiculous being in the 96th minute, um, you know, there's a difference between the last game where, you know, we were unlucky, where Lindelof was running, couldn't do anything about it. The ball was about a yard away and it hit his hand. There's a difference between that and MP or Mopé, whatever you call him, uh, raising his hand to the ball. Like, it's an unnatural position. He's moving it towards the ball. It's a penalty. No matter what, like, if you're a Liverpool fan, an Arsenal fan, a Spurs, Chelsea, Man City, if that was happening for your team, you would say it was a penalty. I don't care what anyone says. It's a penalty. And it was correct, and it was given, and thankfully we've walked away with the three points. The performance wasn't great. I'll be honest, uh, there was sparks. There was a few decent things, but overall the performance wasn't amazing. But we've came away with three points, and that's what's important. We play Brighton away in the Capital One Cup next. or oh, oh, sorry, Carabao Cup next. And then we've got Spurs at home, I think. I don't know, I just know we've got Spurs. It doesn't really matter these days because there's no fans in the stadium anyway. So I prefer to be playing all our away games first because then, you know, when COVID's done, we'd have more home games where the fans are there and they can give an edge. But anyhow, regardless, we have Brighton, then we have Spurs next. So uh, in terms of the game, as I say, we went 1-0 behind. It's a stupid foul from Bruno Fernandes. You know, you just got to hold your hands up. It, it wasn't great. Um, but Brighton got the penalty, scored it, um, and then thankfully, instead of letting our heads drop right before half time, we get the equaliser straight away. And I was gutted that it was given as a Lewis dunk on goal. Of course, it is, I know, but considering it was Maguire, uh, I know he's been getting a lot of stick um, from certain fans, and I know he's only scored one goal for Manchester United, but yeah, I was hoping that would go down as his goal, but it didn't. Anyhow, we got the equaliser before half time. And then shortly after the second half, of course, that Connolly uh, incident where it was given as a penalty, but then the referee looked at it a few times on the touchline and decided to overturn it. Despite us having a poor um, VAR decision, well, <sighs> because of the rule book last game, I know the, the stupid boot off the line isn't a poor decision. It's the rule book. It's just a stupid rule. It really is. The penalty taker shouldn't have been changed, but regardless... I feel like VAR will be a lot better this season because the referee, when he's made a decision, the VAR can look at it, but then they can recommend the referee to go look at the monitor, which is exactly what it should be because then they can look at it 10 times, 15 times, however many times they want to, and make an informed decision. That is good. And that happened there and the penalty wasn't given. And then shortly after, Rashford gets a goal that's offside. Uh, I think it was... Bruno or Greenwood who played the pass across but anyway it, it was offside fair enough good finish but offside and then shortly after Rashford gets the ball played from him from Bruno and it's brilliant work this was this was George Best-esque 
you know, he, he's, um, he fakes onto his right, and then you think, oh, he's going to pull the trigger, but no, he fakes it again, sends, uh, I think it was Lalana who slid, uh, you know, back to Liverpool, but then again, they're not going to take him now, he's shit anyway, anyhow, good goal, brilliant from Rashford, it hits Dunk on the way into the net, but yeah, 2-1, um, and from then on in, we looked as though we were going to push for a third, but we didn't, unfortunately, we didn't take uh, the half chances, it was a bit of sloppiness there from Pogba, from Martial, I do not hate Pogba and I do not hate Martial. Just, yeah, in this game, they were pretty poor. And I also want to address something uh, from some of our fans. I really don't get the stupid comparison that fans have between our own players. Like, the whole Martial so much better than Rashford. We have both of them, support them. Like, what is the obsession with putting players of the same team that are performing well, that have scored goals, that have done you know so much in their careers against each other. It's retarded. We have the same thing with Pogba and Bruno. Just be happy that we've got both in the team. Um, but yeah, I, I will say when players have performed poorly, and of course Rashford's had a run where he didn't, but then he scored in the last game and he scored now. Um, and Martial wasn't great in this game. And Bruno... Again, he's been hit and miss in the recent games, but he got an assist this game. And yeah, Pogba, he lost the ball about five times in about 20 minutes. So I can completely understand why Oli did sub on Fred for Pogba. Again, it could be a bit of a COVID hangover. I've never had COVID. I hope I never get it. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how it affects a player, how, you know, it affects their performances or whatever. But hey-ho, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Pogba now has direct competition with Donny van de Beek being there and of course Fred who he was uh, subbed off for. But anyhow, after that, um, we ended up uh, taking off Greenwood, putting Bailly on. There was a lot of debate why Bailly didn't start at the start of the game. I hoped he would, I thought he would, but I suppose Oli's trying to ease him in and I think that's why he subbed him on for the last 15 minutes. Brighton were on the front foot, but... He wants to give him match minutes. He wants to make sure that he's going to be fit and he's going to be healthy for the season because that's the major thing. He started one Premier League game that's last season and I think he only started five in all competitions and that's because he was injured most of the season. And yeah, that's been his main problem. So, you know, fair play. All he's trying to bring him in, trying to make sure that he's going to be fit, but I'm sure he will partner Maguire when he is fit. Um, so yeah, anyway, he was brought on. Donny van de Beek got two minutes at the end. But yeah, we, we had to sustain a lot of pressure from Brighton right at the end of the game. And unfortunately for us, eventually it told in the 95th minute. It's a cross in. It's just, it bubbles through to Solly Marsh, who blasted about five shots uh, before this over the bar. But this one, he headed into the net, 2-2. Two -two. And at that point, I thought, that's it. That's it. But we got a corner. Um, Maguire got a head on it. And from the camera angle that... You know, the match is shown at, I, I couldn't see anything, so I thought, you know, the keepers just saved that, that's it. I was literally on the way to the toilet. It just, yeah, I, I was pissed off. But anyhow, I heard some uh, stuff from the TV, so I came back, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, it was a VAR review, and like I said earlier in the video, it's a handball. Of course it is. It's an unnatural position. He's raising it towards the ball. It strikes his arm. It's on target. It's a penalty. No matter what anyone says, it's a penalty. No matter how well Brighton played, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter the fact it was the 97th minute, it's a penalty. And we got it, and Bruno uh, continues his 100% conversion rate. Now I've said that, he'll miss the next one. But anyhow, we got the points in this game. Bruno scored, got me 30 quid from Skybet for his uh, shot on target, um, which, yeah, I thought I'd lost anyhow. But yeah, regardless, we got three points. And now we have Brighton away in the cup again. I expect a lot of rotation before we play Spurs in the league. And then it's an international break. So we'll see. Transfer window. I'm trying, I'm trying to think if it ends before we play Spurs or after we play Spurs. Regardless, it's around about that fixture. I think it's after. But yeah, there's rumours of us bidding 75 million plus 15 million add-ons for Sanchez. Uh, Sanchez. Sancho. Um, we'll see how that turns out. Dortmund have been very, very uh, blunt about what the demands are for Sancho this season. So it'll be interesting to see whether they will uh, balk at that, whether they'll accept it, what the hell's going to go on. Personally, I think they'll accept that. And considering it's apparently a final offer from us, 
I don't know. I'm. I hope we get Sancho. I'm usually an optimist. I don't know. I'm pretty pessimistic about this one, but we'll see. And then of course we're trying to drive the tellers um, fee down to about twelve million. I think we will eventually compromise at about fifteen million, but we should have had that wrapped up already but hopefully we get Tellez and hopefully we get Sancho and then we can build we can hopefully get uh, Bailly fit for the rest of the season if not then Mengi's coming in I want him to get some game time particularly in the cup game against Brighton he deserves a start in that um, he was great in the Villa friendly for the 20 minutes that he played and now he's part of the first team we definitely need to be giving him minutes because he's a great little centre back and I mean he's 18 at the minute so you know we're not going to sign a centre back regardless of what the reports are um, no I doubt it I really doubt it considering we want right wing we want left back and we've been so incompetent in the market so far I'll be shocked if we have more than one signing to be fair I think we'll get Tellez don't think we'll get anyone else but hopefully we get Sancho and then if we somehow get a centre back as well then my days Woodward's uh I don't know, Woodward and Judge might have uh, might have had some fun. I don't know, I'm going completely off topic here. But anyhow, we'll see how the transfer market ends. But anyhow, good. I've said anyhow about 20 times in the last minute. But anyway, we've won. We've won three points on the board. And we look forward to the Brighton game again in the Cup and the Spurs game. So let me know what your thoughts are. And hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. And yeah, peace.